Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the commanding officers, chief officers, chief petty officers, and crew of the USS Lake Champlain, welcome to the decommissioning ceremony of USS Lake Champlain. I am Lieutenant Commander Chilman, your master of ceremonies. Guests, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing throughout our national anthem and invocation. Military guests will cover and remain covered. Officer of the deck, put the ship at attention. Staff, arriving. Lake Champlain, arriving. Naval Surface Forces, arriving. Vice Admiral, United States Navy, retired, arriving. Bosun, post the side boys. Side boys, left to right, face, home. Parade the colors. CTRC Moore will now sing the national anthem.
Tire the colors. M and one Tizio will now deliver the invocation. Good morning, USS Lake Champlain, her crew, past and present. Good morning, beloved families and our honorable guests. I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, our maker, our ultimate authority, in 1988, you blessed our Navy with this fine warship. You blessed her movements and crew throughout Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and the continuous global war on terrorism efforts. And Lord, I often tell people that being on a cruiser, well, it's no cruise. This work is costly. Families involved must take a very, very deep and high, command, high demanding commitment too, to protect our home front. And this is only possible, dear Lord, by your hand. And we praise you. We praise you for granting courage to our sailors and their families. We ask for your presence during these future demanding trials. And from Joshua 1.9, we echo, grant us power, please, to be strong and courageous, to not be frightened, to not be dismayed, for you have been with us wherever we have gone. As this crew disembarks one last time, we ask for your continued hand on your sailors and especially their families. It is in your heavenly name that your champions do pray. Thy will be done. And your people say, Amen. Navy tradition dictates each ship constructed for service be honored by four historic events. Keel laying, christening, commissioning, and decommissioning. This ceremony, being the last, is designated to be a solemn event. Today we celebrate the 35 years of dedicated service that Lake Champlain has given our nation. A plank owner is an individual who was a member of the crew of the ship when the ship was originally placed in the commissioned service. The origin of the term is the implication that a crew member was assigned when the ship was being built and commissioned. And being built and commissioned, therefore, has rights to the ownership of the one of the wooden planks that was used to comprise the ship's main decks. Many of these plank owners are here today. Assembled before you see the last crew of USS Lake Champlain, the plank champions. Their hard work these past weeks ensure this fine cruiser can continue her service as a logistic support asset. She will continue to support the Navy and her parts will be shared throughout the fleet, keeping her legacy alive. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the commanding officer of USS Lake Champlain, Captain Steve Foley. Thank you all for coming. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is truly humbling to see all you gathered here today. It is my honor to introduce today's guest speaker, who I've had the pleasure of knowing for some time now. Upon graduating from high school, Honolulu, he, earned his, uh, he also uh, earned his biology degree from Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. He then proceeded to Newport, Rhode Island, where he earned his commission. Following several successful tours, he became the executive officer of our very own Lake Champlain. That's where I knew him. And I had the privilege of working with him as a senior chief before commissioning myself. And then he went on to command the USS Benfold and then major command for 
Destroyer Squadron 2A. In his final command, before he retired, he led Naval Surface Forces as a 17th SWO boss. Ladies and gentlemen, please give me a warm up. Please give a warm welcome to our friend, Vice Admiral Tom Copeman. Sure. I was so organized I didn't get my speech into the book because I didn't get it done until last night. It's going to be great, though. It's going to be the best speech most of you have ever heard. So, <laughs> welcome to the families, friends, crew members, past and present, and uh, current active duty sailors to the funeral for a friend. Um, that's what we're kind of saying goodbye to the ship today. Um, and behind me, this ship, it's a wondrous machine of unbelievable complexity and capability. Its sonar systems, its electronic warfare systems, its radars can detect and track submarines, aerial targets, ship and ships from hundreds of miles away, virtually without fail. The machine's weapons can rain destruction on an enemy from over a thousand miles away. It can take out enemy aircraft over Los Angeles from right out there in the sea if required to. The helos can sink a sub 100 miles away. Its guns can pummel an enemy over the horizon and it can strike an enemy ship without notice from hundreds of miles away. This machine, and that's what it is, it's a wonderful machine, it is a tribute to the brilliant scientists and engineers that conceived and designed her. It's a testament to the talents and the dedication and skill of the shipbuilders in Pascagoula, Mississippi, the men and women that built this ship 35 years ago. The fact that she's sitting here, 35 years old, still mission capable, except for the fact that she's being taken out of service, is a tribute to all the men and women that have sailed in her, maintained her, kept spare parts on the shelf, made the sailors trained to do their job, and kept the equipment modernized, repaired, and able to take on any mission that the Navy called upon it to do. It's really a tribute to the surface Navy and all the people that are in the surface Navy enterprise that support these ships. And it's, it's a big, giant family that does that. It's getting tougher and tougher to keep these ships running. Competition for scarce resources in the DOD have led for tough choices, such as decommissioning an older but very capable ship, such as the Lake Champlain. There's not enough, there's not enough sailors with the proper skills to fully man the fleet that we have. There's not enough money to keep all the equipment modernized and ready for the current and future fights. There are not enough spares available in a timely manner to keep all the degraded equipment running. There's not enough ordnance to go around and there's never enough time to do the type of training that we need to do. And finally, there's never enough money and there's some people that work this every day. Uh, Bob Bauer used to. There's never enough money to do the required maintenance, let alone the emergent repairs. Sounds like a gloomy story, doesn't it? Because it is a little bit gloomy. Um, but I'm going to steal a line from Dan Fogelberg, one of my favorite artists. And I quote, there's a light at the depth of every darkness. And it is my firm belief that the light at the depth of the Navy readiness darkness are the sailors that man these machines. This marvel of technology sitting behind me would be, as Admiral Ernie King, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, would be nothing without men, and I'll add women. It's truly the people, the sailors, that have sailed in the Lake Champagne, Champlain for the last 35 years that have drawn us here today, all of us, hundreds of people. Um, if this ship were an unmanned surface vessel, there'd probably be maybe a dozen or so people here to see it, say goodbye. It is above all else the people we are here today to pay tribute to. Sir John Fisher said in 1919, the year before he died in 2020, or 1920, the Navy is always at war because it's always fighting the winds and the waves and the fog. The Navy is ready for an instant blow. The ocean is limitless and unobstructed, and the fleet, each ship manned, gunned, provisioned, and fueled, ready to fight in five minutes. I think the quote embodies much about the difference between being a seagoing sailor or Coast Guardman that sets us apart from all the other uniformed services. Sailors really are at war, even when there's not one declared. The sea is merciless. The machine that they operate on is filled with a half a million gallons of flammable fuel. High voltage electricity courses through its veins and it's not covered by sheet rock uh, to, to keep you from seeing it. 
uh, whirling helos fly off the deck and hundreds of tons of explosives, gunpowder, solid rocket fuel, reside in our magazines, all separated from the sea and any potential adversary by a mere three-eighths inch of steel. That's why sailors are always at war at sea or in port. They can never let their guard down, not even for a minute. It's those sailors who have literally given up the primes of their lives. And I'm one of them, and all of you that have served at sea know, know what I'm talking about, to keep this machine in fighting shape. And that's who we're really here to pay tribute to all of you, past and present. The engineers who kept the engines running, the power flowing, the AC cooling, the fresh water flowing, the sewage from not flowing into the ship. <laughs> the air compressors compressing, preventing fires from starting, and when they rarely did start, putting them out quickly without any damage. The engineers that made the spare part that was needed on the lathe or welded the broken one back together when we needed it to keep things going. The operations specialist who saved an air crew's life getting them safely back to the ship on a dark and stormy night, or who backed up the bridge and navigation to keep the machine fair in the channel. The RMs, the ETs, and I know the ratings have all changed a lot since I was on active duty and on here, but um, who kept all the comm here and the data links working, the electronic warfare tech that always gave us the first heads up of any potential threat. The sonarman, Senior Chief Foley, one of them, who perfected the dark art of seeing and tracking something that can't be seen. The gunner's mates that kept the guns and the missiles going, the Aegis techs that kept the radars going, the bosuns who fought the never-ending war on rust and whose expertise steered the ship to get tied up and anchored, kept it refueled at sea or made sure flight ops were always safe as they could be on a heaving postage stamp sized light deck. The quartermasters who kept the keel off the bottom, the signalmen on the bridge who kept us in touch with the other ships when MCON was set, the cooks who fed the crew 24 hours a day underway, the supply team who kept spares on track occasionally. <laughs> George. <laughs> I see the old suppo out there acting on huh, me, talking about me. The sailors who made sure you got paid, made sure you got a haircut when you needed one. Wasn't a good haircut, but they got you one. Kept coast clean, gave you career advice, helped you re-enlist, man the skiff, kept the phones working, the ship store and the vending machine stocked and so on. The command master chiefs, and I don't know if Master Chief Viscara is here or not. If you are, please stand up. No, nope, he's not here. He was a CMC. He was a C yeah, C was so CMC when I was a XO, and I, I can't tell you how many times that guy talked me off the ledge. Um, to all the command master chiefs and the chiefs in the mess, they led from the deck plates. They were and continue to be the lifeblood of the Navy. We don't have enough chiefs on the ships right now, so the lifeblood's blood pressure is a little bit low, a little lower than we'd like it to be, but no one's fainting yet, but there's probably a couple of ships out there feeling lightheaded. The commanding officers in the wardrooms. The commanding officers carried a burden that cannot be easily explained except to those that have borne that burden. The inescapable accountability and responsibility for the lives and well-being of 300 dedicated patriots and the readiness of their command to conduct prompt and sustained combat operations at sea is a heavy burden. The wardrooms are invaluable for their leadership and their dedication to taking care of the sailors in charge. The officers' dedication to learning the art of surface warfare from 01 to 06 can never stop. It's not a matter of personal preference for an officer to be good or not at the art of surface warfare. It's a matter of life and death that they be good at it. Without all these dedicated sailors, officers, and enlisted, the ship behind us would have been nothing but a monument to technology. For 35 years, it was the home to thousands of sailors. Lifelong bonds of friendship were formed. The hardship of the seagoing life, a common sense of mission, and an even application of the same tough standards enabled people from all over the world, all walks of life, all sorts of different religions and political viewpoints to establish and create lifelong bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood. And I think, it, I think that is an unbelievable and remarkable trait of serving on a ship at sea with 300 people and less than 600 feet. So I just want to close by thanking the current crew and all the past crews of Lake Champlain. Thank you and farewell, Lake Champlain.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of Carrie Stryker One's Battle Effectiveness Award presented by Naval Service Forces Rear Admiral Yvette Davids. The Battle Effectiveness Award, Battle E Award, recognizes sustained superior performance in an operational environment and warrior skills throughout the optimized fleet response plan. The Battle E Award is not a qualification or award for mere excellence, and it is awarded to the ship and the organization that best demonstrates warrior skills needed in conflict. Also, the deck, place the ship at attention. Attention to award. Ladies and gentlemen, the calendar year 2022 Carrier Strike Group 1 Battle E Award recipient, USS Lake Champlain. Admiral Davids will now present Captain Foley's end of tour award. Attention to the award. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit to Captain Stephen M. Foley, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following citation. For exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as commanding officer at USS Lake Champlain from April 2021 to August 2023, Captain Foley displayed visionary leadership, managerial acumen, and technical expertise while performing his demanding duties. Every success Lake Champlain enjoyed was a direct result of his dedication to mission success and innate ability to develop and execute a plan with precision and excellence. He fostered a culture of readiness and combat effectiveness and adherence to material standards. His incomparable professionalism propelled Lake Champlain through eight multi-warfare uh, sustainment exercises and five mission area certifications. His leadership was evident as Lake Champlain received the above class average during Ready 6 in a compressed timeline. During a demanding seven-month deployment, Lake Champlain provided the air defense picture to Carrier Strike Group 1 and supported six multi-carrier exercises, facilitating integration with Air Wing and the future and enhancing maritime partnership within the Indo-Pacific Command Area of Responsibility. His clear and direct communication with leaders fleet-wide ensured Lake Champlain maintained peak mission readiness throughout an extended post-deployment sustainment phase. By his dynamic direction, keen judgment, in loyal dedication duty, Captain Foley reflected credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, signed R.I. Kitchener, Vice Admiral, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Service Forces, U.S. Pacific Fleet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 19th and final Commanding Officer of USS Lake Champlain, Captain Stephen Foley. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you know these awards. Uh, the uh, you know I'm here to accept this award, but uh, it's uh, really due to uh, all the crew behind me, manning the rails here, and uh, I couldn't be more proud of this ship. So good morning, everyone, and very thankful that so many people can make it here today. Just truly impressed. Um, welcome admirals, commodores, captains, former Lake Champlain captains. There's eight of them here today. And Lake Champlain crew members that made it, waterfront captains, shipmates, family and friends. Thank you for joining us today as I relinquish command and we decommission Lake Champlain after a highly distinguished 35 year career. Admiral David, congratulations for taking over as slow boss, and thank you, ma'am, for being here today to see Champ one last time. Admiral Copeman, thank you for your words, and especially your wit and humor. I appreciate all the advice and mentorship you've given me when we served together on Lake Champlain back in the 90s. And then again, when you were slow boss, when I had command of Samson, you were a big reason why I selected as an officer, and even a greater reason I stand here today, and I can't thank you enough, sir. Thank you. My boss, Admiral Sardiello, car Commander uh, Carrier Strike Group 1, he couldn't attend due to travel, and he sends his regards. And thank you, Captain Marley, our Chief of Staff at Carrier Strike Group 1, for being here and representing our strike group. Thank you. My acting chaps, Petty Officer Tizio, thank you for stepping up in the absence of our permanent chaps and providing us with prayer today. God knows we need it. Scott Chang, now EXO, 
Thanks for filling the role as second in command. You made it happen by commanding and leading the ship to excellence. Well done. Also, thank you to my prior XOs, Commanders Thad Tasso and John Hightower, for their dedication and commitment to CHAMP and for providing me with friendship and sage advice. And congratulations to both of you again on your command selection. To my command senior chief, Justin Ballou, who stepped in after my command master chief, Charles Smith, was afforded the opportunity to take command as staff CMC at Naval Surface Forces. Thank you, CMC Smith and Senior Ballou, for getting after it on the deck plates and taking care of the ship and taking care of our sailors. We all benefited immensely from your leadership and guidance. And please give a round of applause to the Navy Band. Professional and sharp as always, thank you, Navy Band. And a special thank you to the Color Guard, Side Boys, Bosun, Bell Ringer, our PAO, Lieutenant J.G. Miller, Lieutenant Bedesny, and Lieutenant J.G. Fry, and all of the crew that put together this terrific ceremony. There is a lot of preparation that goes into these events, and they did a fantastic job. Please give them all a round of applause. where it gets to the hard part. To all my family and friends. Yeah, so hey, everybody please see. Yeah, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Got that cue from the wife. All right, a little bit more comfortable now. Crazy, threw me off there for a second. To all my family and friends, to many who have traveled a long way, and even as far as the East Coast, avoiding the hurricane, and a special shout out to those watching online on Facebook, all over the world, thank you for your service and thank you for your continued love and support. You never gave up on me, mentoring me, guiding me, and showing me what right looks like, and without all of you, my career would have sunk decades ago. So thanks for steering me out of danger and always keeping me safe water. To Cindy, my beautiful wife, we have created such a wonderfully blessed and blended family. And I am so thankful I had you at the helm for, through the best years as XO and three command tours. We are so fortunate to be surrounded by such an amazing, loving family. And we are truly anchored in love. Thank you, my darling, for being there for all of us and keeping the ship righted. Your kind and loving heart has made all the difference. And I couldn't have done this without you and your understanding and full support. You are my beautiful crazy and I love you. Well, that was smooth sailing on that one. To my sons, Ryan, Michael, and Kevin, my stepdaughters, Lauren and Shannon, my daughters-in-laws, Erica, Claire, and Catherine, and my son-in-law, Zach, thank you for being here. It is really difficult to assemble the whole crew in one place, especially when everyone is scattered all over the country. And I'm very thankful to have all of you here today and I am so proud of all your accomplishments, but most importantly, I'm especially proud of the fine men and women, the great Americans you've grown to become. And Michael and Kevin, thank you for your service as well. Looking sharp, as always. Additionally, I'd like to thank my, uh, my son, Ryan and Erica, and my stepdaughter, Lauren and Zach, for making me a grandpa. Nice. Though I told them I'm just not ready to be called qu grandpa quite yet. Yes, so, uh, so instead I just have my beautiful grandbabies, Bradley, Gavin, and Marin call me Captain. Makes it easy. So Captain loves you very much. Okay. Pat, Nana, thanks for being here. I couldn't have asked for a better mother-in-law. Thank you for your friendship and advice, and thank you for your continued love and support. To Cindy and, and I and our extended family and friends, thank you. Love you too. My brother Don, sister Susan, and brother-in-law Jerry, great to have you at every one of these ceremonies. You've been my biggest fans and your love and guidance has helped me beyond measure. Words cannot express my love and gratitude, so thank you. To a couple of my close friends who made the journey here, thank you Cam and Kathy, and Adam and Lisa, your friendship means the world and your presence here even more. I know it's a lot of thanks, but there have been so many people that have helped support me and the Lake Champlain sailors, like our current ombudsman, Cat Moore, and our, all of our past volunteers. Thank you for looking after our Navy families and for providing them with such 
needed, excuse me, needed support, especially when we were away from home port and deployed around the world. And thanks to the maintenance team, including Southwest RMC, port engineers, waterfront leaders, the contractors, government employees that made it possible for us to maintain this battle-ready cruiser for over three plus decades. And I apologize if I haven't specifically called you out by name. So many of you have helped me and helped my, these fine champions succeed. And I would be here for days, maybe even weeks, if I tried to recognize you all. But let me assure you, your hard work, sacrifice, and support has not gone unnoticed. But this is mostly about the big girl that stands behind me, because today is her day. Three ships have carried the namesake Lake Champlain from the Battle of Lake Champlain during the War of 1812. The first was a cargo ship dating back to 18, uh, 1918. And then a little over 20 years later, the namesake Lake Champlain was reintroduced as an Essex-class carrier CV-39 on June 3rd, 1945, just before the end of World War II. And due to the end of the war, she was decommissioned in 1947, but then modernized to be recommissioned in 1952, where she participated in the Korean War. She later became the prime recovery ship for America's first crewed space flight for NASA's Project Mercury, and then once again for Gemini missions two and five. And you can catch some of Alan Shepard's Mercury capsule recovery footage appearing in the film Hidden Figures. The current Lake Champlain, our champion, is the 11th Ticonderoga Ticonderoga class cruiser to be built and the sixth cruiser to be outfitted with the new vertical launch system, which became the standard for all destroyers and cruisers and was a real game changer for establishing America's dominance after the Cold War. Built to fight, her keel was laid down March 3, 1986 in Pasigula, Mississippi, then launched April 3, 1987 and commissioned August 12, 1988 at Intrepid Pier at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum in New York City with Captain Ralph K. Martin, rest his soul, assuming command as Champ's first commanding officer. Captain Martin and the crew of the plank owners then set their course for their home port in San Diego via the Cape Horn, South America, losing part of her hurricane bow. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, making her current and long, and they also lost the uh, Hurricane Bow, it was just probably right by the Falcons, uh, Falkland Islands when they lost it, uh, as they made the, uh, the trip all the way around and uh, came here in San Diego. And now Lake Champlain is, makes her the current and longest home ported warship serving here at Naval Base San Diego. She's never changed home ports. So the big girl, she's been a stalwart warship, completing 17 major deployments over a 35-year career and conducted numerous exercises with, and operations with joint coalition partners all around the globe. And most notably, she has been to the Persian Gulf on multiple occasions, first as part of Operation Desert Shield, then following Desert Storm. She also aided in the evacuation of the Philippines during the Mount Pinatubo eruption in 1991 and she has received numerous unit combinations, campaign medals, and has answered our nation's call throughout every ocean in the world. She is a true champion. So after getting selected to major command, I knew I, I wanted to be a cruiser captain, reluctantly from Cindy, you know. When I got the call to take command of CHAMP, completely surreal, because now I had the chance to come back to the ship where I served in Chief's Mess for four years, and as a chief and senior chief, and then I selected as officer as well under the LDO program. I took command of CHAMP on April 9th, 2021. We're just going to leave those for dead. Flags flying over. So I took command of CHAMP in April, uh, on April 9th, 2021 in Port Wainimi. We're leaving from uh, my good friend Alan. And it has been the most fulfilling two and a half years of my career. Shortly after I took command, CHAMP deployed to various areas of the Western Pacific, South China Sea, the Indian Ocean as the Air Warfare Commander. We're just going to see if all of them get knocked over. <laughs> so I took over and uh, we, we supported uh, the Vincent Strike Group deploying with the new F-35 Joint Fighter. And upon return from a highly successful deployment in February of 2022, the ship entered what we call the sustainment phase. Where instead of preparing the ship for a long maintenance phase and subsequent training phase, we kept operating like she was on deployment fully ready to answer all bells and capable to deploy 
again, any time on short notice. And this fine crew certainly did that, keeping her battle ready while she got after numerous exercises and operational taskings for the past year and a half, and all the way up to and including our recent 53-day surge deployment this past summer to Alaska to support joint services exercises during Operation Northern Edge and then real-world tasking along the western United States Pacific coast. Thanks, Alan. Despite being over 35 years old, this girl operated in an extremely high state of readiness. So just to show off before pulling her back into San Diego for one last time, and to prove her worth, we completed a full power run. This is where we bring all four main engines online, increase our speed, and with the command, all engines ahead flank, we monitor the engine parameters while maintaining maximum speed possible. Even after 35 years, Champ cut smoothly through the water, pushing nearly 10,000 tons to over 30 plus knots. Oh yeah, she still had it, and more. And none of that would be possible without hard work, without the hard work, sacrifice, and true grit of the awesome crew that manned the rails before you. I would ask that all champ warriors, past and present, please stand with the crew to be recognized for your hard work and dedication that you delivered over the past three and a half decades that made Lake Champlain a true champion. Awesome. Thank you for your service. There you go. And from day one, our philosophy has been to take care of the ship, take care of our shipmates and execute with excellence and do all that while always treating everyone with dignity and respect. That very mindset and the pride in their trade is manifested throughout the deck plates and made these champ warriors the best back-to-back battle winning crew I've ever served with. Well done. And I'm so proud of this crew and all they have accomplished to finish strong and close out a historic career for America's finest cruiser, USS Lake Champlain. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has truly been an honor and privilege to be the 19th and final commanding officer of this remarkable warship and extraordinary crew. And it is with a heavy heart that I close by saying thank you, champ, and thank you for all that served and stood the watch. You made her great. And now she is quiet, her weapons offloaded, her fuel removed, and soon her crew will disembark. For over 35 years, Lake Champlain stood the watch. And now, Champ, you stand relieved. But the memories we shared and the legacy we made will live forever in our hearts. And as always, absolutely. Thank you and God bless. Read Lake Champlain's decommissioning orders. Awesome. Okay. Ship at attention. Okay. Orders. From the Chief of Naval Operations, Washington, D.C., to USS Lake Champlain, subject order decommissioned USS Lake Champlain, CG 57, date time group 10201 Zulu, January 23. In accordance with OPNAV ship in inactivation schedule, decommission USS Lake Champlain CG-57 and place into logistics support asset status effective 8 September 2023. Navy staff sends. Excel. Make preparations decommission United States ship Lake Champlain I, sir. Guests, please be seated. Farm heads, make preparations to decommission the United States ship Lake Champlain.
XO. Anchor is secured. Preparations for tow are complete. Lights are extinguished. Charts are struck. Deck logs are secured. Operations and executive department are prepared to decommission the ship, sir. Very well. Sir, United States ship Lake Champlain is ready to decommission, sir. Very well. Strike the commission pennant, haul down the ensign and union jack. Strike the commission pennant, haul down the ensign and union jack, God, sir. is a name given to every American flag that has flown on every commissioned warship. United Nations Convention Law of the Sea and Customary International Law lays down three criteria for a vessel to be considered a warship. A warship means first, a ship belonging to the armed forces of a state bearing external markings distinguishing such ship of its nationality. Second, she is under the command of an officer duly commissioned by the government of the state and whose name appears in an appropriate service list or its equivalent. Third, she is manned by a crew which is under regular armed force discipline. Off to the deck, place the ship at parade rest, and guests, please be seated. Following naval tradition and customs, Command and Senior Chief Buo will now present the final commissioning pennant flown on USS Lake Champlain to the commanding officer.
Like so. Secure the watch and disembark the crew. Secure the watch and disembark the crew. Aye, sir. Command Senior Chief. Secure the watch and disembark the crew. Secure the watch and disembark the crew. Aye, sir. The crew is disembarked and the final watch is secured. United States ship Lake Champlain is decommissioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the departure of the official party.
Dear Lord Almighty, with wisdom of your words, you spoke creation. With your breath, you breathed into man's lungs, and from dust man came. And praise the Lord that it is to God that we return. To the King, his glory is to seek you out. To your humble-hearted servant, his purpose is to be your witness. And bless your people to reach you and what you have concealed. For human is limited and short of days and short of wit, but our powerful and mighty God is limitless. May you bless us with godly, godly wisdom. Bless the hands of these sailors and their beautiful families. Open our ears, loosen our necks, soften our hearts, and praise be to you, our King of Kings, thy will be done. Amen. Post aside, boys. Vice Admiral, United States Navy, retired, departing. <laughs> Naval Surface Forces, departing. Staff, departing. <laughs> Captain, United States Navy, departing. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes our decommissioning of USS Lake Champlain. Guests are invited to enjoy light refreshments on the pier. I invite